I didn't really have too many ties to the Bruins. Like when I was when I was there, I mean, we watched their games obviously because they're on so much. But um, no, overall, it's it's always fun to play good teams, and they're obviously they're rolling. So it's fun. even though you got so only beat twice a season, is it still going to feel a little rare not seeing Bergeron and Krejci on the other side of the ice? Yeah, I mean, we haven't played them yet, so it might be a little bit weird when we get out there. But um, obviously, they've had a lot of guys that have stepped up in, into those roles, and they're they're kind of clicking along at a good pace for um, for their team. So. Um, they built from the back end up. They got a really good back end, and then obviously their forwards are, are, are elite as well. So it's going to be a tough challenge for everybody. Kelly, for the Abs back end, um, when it comes to goals and points, this, this team is number one in the league. It's more than just you. Why do you, you generate so many points from the blue one? I think it just goes back to kind of getting that freedom, um, allowing us to, the coach allowing us to just kind of play our game, and then. Um, our forwards also being able to find that second layer, whether it's us or, or, or another forward. So um, for us, we get the green light to maybe make decisions that um, sometimes maybe a little bit more risky, but I feel like at some points they pay off. And for us, uh, we obviously always want to be involved in the back end, and I think that's such a big part of the game nowadays. So um, to have a back end where everybody can do that is pretty, pretty good. I know your, how's your brother doing at UMass and see how often you check in with him? Good, yeah, I actually talked quite a bit with him. Um, I think he's having, he's having an all right year. I think their team's doing pretty well. they got some good players, so uh, it's fun to watch. I watch their games whenever I can, so definitely keep tabs on them. It's fun. I mean, the amount that he's grown over the past few years is pretty cool. So. You know, you're a little beyond this, but how do you earn the trust of a coach? Uh, I mean, you do the right things, I guess. Uh, for us, it's just it goes back to the to the little details, um, discipline of the details in our game. Um, whether it's through structure or just working out working guys, I think that's where um, it all starts. I think that's the best basis for for guys looking at your track. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My son wanted to say hi to you. Oh, no, with you. He was yeah. you know, quickly, if you could look back on your time in the AHL and you know, what that development meant to you as a player. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough league. Um, hard road schedule, hard with a lot of things. Um, you know, it's, you play a lot of games in three and three, so you just make sure you have all the sense of relief you show up every day. And just be extreme, you know, put your best foot forward in, in tough circumstances all the time. So it gets you ready for the NHL in that aspect, as well as just there's so much talent down there, too. There's so many guys that want to play in the NHL that don't have to really work just because it's a league with 32 teams. There's only certain amount of spots. So a lot of really good players, and then, you know, the coaching center is down there do a great job of developing players and, and sending you out to, to go up and have success when you get a call. So, uh, yeah, give me one second. Good job of setting it up for the young players and success. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. You know, just kind of getting back into the rhythm of things that like Nate was talking last year about. It's hard not being here. Yeah, no, it obviously sucks. Uh, just obviously, want to be out there with the guys. But it's just a long season. Wanted to make sure that I was just ready to go. Um, Moving forward here, I know we had a tough stretch, so um, credit to the trainers. They did a good job of kind of getting me back soon after I was going to be so. Uh, obviously, that's a, you know, that's a weird game a couple days ago. How do you guys kind of respond, and how do you feel the the last couple days? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, we were on a nice little stretch there. I thought we were playing really good hockey, and then, um, I mean, Panthers are a good team. I thought, you know, we had a slow start there, but um, second and third, I thought we played really well. Um, some unfortunate penalties there in the third that kind of, you know, switched on me. Um, it kind of sucked. That kind of hurt us a little bit. So, um, but other than that, I mean, if we kind of started the way we did in the second period in the first, I think you know we probably would have had a better outcome. Did you get much of an explanation for that? Because we, we couldn't figure out what kind of happened on that. Because there was no call, and then suddenly there's a double minor. that didn't show any blood on the yeah. screens. I mean, I, I don't even know what I could say on it. I mean, just from what I saw, he skated in my stick. I didn't even think he was bleeding. Somehow they review it in some four minute when. I mean, again, I don't even know how it's a penalty, so, um, yeah, I mean, kind of just turned the page on, it's unfortunate. Thanks for watching. Did you just describe the last game as a one-off? Did you share in that sentiment as a group that it was something you could just leave behind and turn the page quickly on? Yeah, I mean, I, do, I think you can do that, but, I mean, for the most part, there, I actually thought we played a pretty good game besides the first period. I mean, so there's definitely some stuff we can build on um, from that game, especially that second period. Um, you know, I thought all four lines were playing really well, guys were flying, and um, we controlled the play, I felt like, for you know the second half of that game. But uh, yeah, if we just need a better start, I think we're fine on that. Did the last two games before that ending outside of regulation seem to take a little bit of a toll on the group and lead to the start that you had? No, I, I don't think so at all. I think just a lot of that start is just mental. I think you got to be ready. Uh, you know, mentally to come out, you know, especially a team like that, they're obviously going to come out flying. 
um, a lot of teams do in this building. So I think that's more on us to kind of we have to uh, dictate, control the play, which I actually felt like for the most part we do a good job of that. But you know, last game obviously we didn't. I don't remember how much he enjoys our whole experience. We're on the locker room and the players and the staff, and uh, it's always cool, like I said, to, to bring someone in and show us what we do on a daily basis. And for her to live it a little bit, it's cool. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate it. We ready for you? Yep. John. Uh, first question, I guess, is you know that breakaway goal that you had last game, yeah. pretty amazing. And how you know after, with the results of that game, how do you keep that momentum going and, and just you know, yeah. keep improving like that? Yeah, um, it was a big goal. Obviously, we hit four four, but. Um, that penalty in the 5 on 3 that kind of hurt us there and kind of put us in a hole. And, uh, yeah, we're going to face a team tonight. We can't, we can't have really those mistakes where you get a 5 on 3 where you get them on their side. Um, they're a strong um, veteran team where they're stingy and they know how to play the game. And, um, so, yeah, the mistakes are going to be costly tonight, so hopefully we don't do too many. Uh, chase the game a lot later. Yeah. Is it tougher to kind of get into a rhythm when you're trying to chase constantly? Yeah, not really. I think um, a couple of guys have said that I've said it where you know, we're trying the process right now. We don't really look at the score. Um, obviously, sometimes you're, you're going to peak, but um, no panic. There's no, we're going to change our game and do something different. We think we just stick with our process. I mean, we've come back in games and uh, nice to have the lead a little bit more, like you said, and I'll chase them. But uh, I thought we did a good job of just staying even keel and uh, doing what we're supposed to do, even though we're down a couple or we just won. You mentioned in camp that this is probably the healthiest you felt yeah. in years. Do you feel like that kind of plays into confidence a little bit? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think I'm even more healthier than I was at training camp, and I feel even better than I did. So, um, yeah, um, it's accustomed to this team, the trainers, and everyone here doing a great job with their bodies. And um, I think it benefited me, and I definitely have confidence. Last couple games. Obviously, you yeah. played with Nate before. When you see him play like this, are you, mm -hmm. is it kind of like, oh, I've seen this before? Yeah, just... <laughs> I, I've seen it, um, but it's the NHL. So um, it's always special. It's always something cool to watch. And uh, as a lineman, you want to get that level, and you want to play that level. So I'm um, not really watching. I'm trying to get into play and help him. And, um, you know, same thing with Miko. Those two guys are really, really, really elite. What does it mean for you to have to trust the coaching staff to, to be able to play with those guys? Yeah. It's a bit, of, a bit of a privilege. In this team. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I think um, it's something you want as a player. It's not something you know you want to shy away. You want to be the, the, the top lines and you know grabbing those top minutes and the tough minutes. And uh, tonight we're going to play a very good line, probably play some time against Pasternak. tonight. So you got to be got to be aware who, who's on the ice. And uh, it's always nice to have the confidence from the coach. But um, you know, it's not. I don't want this to last for a week. I want this to keep going on and even getting better at it. The ability to come back in games, yep. both games in Dallas this year and then in Florida. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this group makes them able to do that? That might be yeah. pretty special to them. I think the one thing is no panic. Um, I've played on you know, Tampa. It was kind of like that in the first three years. We didn't really panic for where the score was or... Um, kind of stuck to our, I know it's a routine, it sounds like a cliche, but uh, the process and doing what we do, and um, I thought we did a good job of not you know, looking too far ahead, looking too far back, and just really focus on the moment and uh, making sure our next shifts are good, and um, we'll check the results after 60. And we'll just, sorry. Right. No Thank you. Thank you. Well, obviously, ups and downs like every team in the league, but um, you know, overall, we've uh, been pretty solid. <coughs> the next step needs to be what for the abs? Uh... I don't know. I think just, uh, you know, we've, we've been doing a better job of just sticking with our game. Um, you know, whether we're up or down, we're, I feel like we're a little more level-headed. Uh, we, we stick to our process for a full 60 more than earlier in the season, and we've had a lot of comeback wins as of late. And, uh, you know, we don't get too down on ourselves, which is always good. And I think just continuing that is, uh, would be a good thing. Brad Marshian talked the other day about what he's learned from Sid. What have you picked up from Marshian? Um, yeah, a lot. So obviously, Marshy is a, is a, you know, as hard as worker I've ever seen. Um, you know, in the summers, obviously, I think he does uh, during the season as well. Obviously, I don't see that stuff, but he always is in great shape. Uh, takes his, you know, career very seriously, and you know, he's the captain there for a reason. I think, and uh, he's definitely earned that. What sort of challenge do the Bruins present tonight? A lot, a lot of challenges. I mean, they're one of the best teams in the league. Um, you know, it's always fun playing a top team from the East. We don't see them a ton, so it's always good to uh, play against them. And obviously, we have to keep an eye out for their best players. And, you know, Pasta and Marshy and, uh, and McAvoy, all those guys are so dangerous. And it's going to be a, a challenge for sure. What's it like playing against Brad? It's fun. I mean, I know him really well. And, um, I'm sure he'll come after me a little bit tonight, which is always fun. In the summers, we do that a lot as well. So, uh, but yeah, he's a great guy. I think 
you know, he's a he's an awesome hockey player. Obviously, he's uh, you know he's I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer one day, and um, it's always fun playing uh, you know veterans in the league that have had great careers. He said he doesn't chirp Sid. Does he chirp you? Yeah, I don't think he's got the same respect for me as Sid. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll be chirping me tonight for sure. What's it going to be like tonight, uh, not seeing Bergeron and Krejci on the ice for the first time? Yeah, obviously it's, it'll be a little different. Um, you know, those are pillars of the organization for a long time, especially Bergeron. You know, he's a he's a legend and. Um, you know, I'm not mad about not playing him tonight for sure. He's uh, he's always tough, and um, you know, obviously, wish him the best in retirement. Are you surprised at all that they've been able to keep up the success with the, with the changes they've had this season? Um, I don't know. I really think about it. I, I just always assume Boston's going to be good. It just seems like that they're just always good, and they find a way. And they do have young players that are obviously getting better and. Um, great goaltending as well. They got two really good goalies, and um, yeah, no surprises. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Again, too, with uh, being able to make offensive plays. Um, so I think for us, just simplifying our game a little bit, um, making sure that we keep things to the outside, and um, trying to play as much in their D zone as we can, or in their yeah, in their D zone as we can, um, should benefit us well tonight. But yeah, they're a highly skilled group with a lot of speed, so we just got to manage that. For us, um, you know, I think you just see guys stepping up. Uh, Freddie's been fantastic. Charlie Coyle as well. Uh, these guys are coming to play each night. And, um, yeah, they're doing the right things. Uh, I think through video and whatnot, we've learned um, the areas that we're going to create more scoring chances. And, um, you know, those guys have obviously taken note of that, and it's been working out. What type of challenges does McCarr present for you, the back end specifically there? Yeah, he's uh, always up in the rush, him and Taze. Um, you know, those guys are very good at finding their opportunities to be that fourth man into the rush. So. Um, you got to be aware of those higher plays coming into the zone and, and um, definitely, you know, try and navigate with your forwards to, to track those guys well to make sure that you can get them, take them out of the play, um, even though they are kind of that second layer of offense. Going up here, who are some of the guys that you followed on the Avalanche? Yeah, uh, my favorite player was Rob Blake for a long time. Um, you know, I remember watching a lot of that, uh, that time frame um, with, with Sackick and those guys. And then as it progressed, you obviously, um, it got into the McKinnon phase and uh, Landis Cog, all those guys, um, Paul Stasny, uh, John Michael Lyles, just so many guys that I've had the pleasure of getting to know a little bit too. So, um, you know, I have a lot of uh, respect for those guys and have always looked up to a lot of them. So uh, it's great to be back in this building and then playing in the same uh, arena that they were. Yeah, I think so. Uh, maybe it's dumbed down now that I'm here for, I've been here for a little while, but each year uh, it's always a surprise to see how many people come. So it, it's great to be uh, supported like that, and I feel very thankful. The Thunderbird program, what did that mean for, for your development those, those years that you were playing? Huge, about? huge. Um, I definitely don't feel like I would be where I am without that organization and um, the coaching staff there. Angelo Ricci, a uh, big influence in my life, uh, somebody who coached me for a couple years and taught me how to you know, be more of a professional type of a uh, player. And um, he cared about us on and off the ice, and I feel like there was a lot of things that I learned, uh, especially off the ice from that time frame of my life that have helped me moving forward, so I'm very thankful for that time. Were there any other options for you? Um, Thunderbirds were primarily my, my biggest option and um, kind of got integrated with that group when I was 14 and stuck with it. So um, there's a couple other teams. There's a Colorado Springs team, um, one a little bit more north, but uh, the Thunderbirds were the right fit for me. I didn't mean to turn this on the screen. It's all right. <laughs> it seems like this group really enjoys playing for Monty. What about how he is as a coach complements who you are as a leader? Um, yeah, I think he's uh, very vocal uh, as a coach. Um, you know, he has very high expectations, uh, expects us to be good every day, but, um, you know, he, he lets us know what he expects. And, and because of that, uh, we're able to reinforce it as leaders and, and uh, you know, be on the same page uh, with expectations, and, uh, especially in an organization like ours uh, that's big. And, um, you know, he, he uh, is also a coach that allows us to have a lot of fun, and it's enjoyable to come to the rink every day and play for him. Um, but, you know, the, the, it, we're expected to come to the rink and work, and I think he's got a great balance of that, uh, and it's been great so far. On that power play, what, Brad, what does McKinnon do on that half wall that makes him such a, a handful? Um, you know, he, he's really good at attacking that scene um, because of his speed and the way he attacks that. It opens up uh, his ability to shoot uh, or, or, you know, hit random through the seam or um, kind of go down low. So he kind of puts everybody on pause and 
uh, he's hard to uh, kind of keep that gap tight to him. So he gives himself a little extra space, which allows him to make plays. Ryan, right, is a game like this just another game for you guys, or is it maybe a little something more to give it to Abilene? Why would it be more yeah, against Abilene? Just their history, the way, you know, two top teams in the league. Uh, yeah, I mean, anytime you're playing against a top team, it's definitely a measuring stick game. Um, you know, we, we know that they're a dominant team in this league, and, um, you know, we, we know that if we're going to um, beat them, we got to bring our best. And, and, you know, obviously, you look ahead towards a uh, potential final matchup down the road, right? That's obviously a long time away, but, um, you know, you, you it's a great way to kind of feel out what they, what they bring to the game every night. But, um, you know, at this point, I think, Everybody knows they have an extremely offensive group and, and they compete very hard. So, uh, you know, definitely a, it's always a fun one for sure to, to be part of. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's about how we play, how we prepare, and um, that's what we'll be focused on. You talked about your relationship with Sid last week. What's it been like to, to train with him? I don't train with McKinnon, I skate, I skate with him. Um, uh, Nate and Sid train together, uh, and they have created an extremely um, competitive environment for themselves, and, and uh, they hold each other to extremely high expectations uh, every day in their training and in their work in the summer. Um, you know, and, and I, I personally think that uh, Nate probably wouldn't be the player he is today if, if you know, they didn't create that environment uh, at a very young age. And, uh, Sid didn't kind of take him under his wing. You know, Nate got to learn firsthand um, how the best player in the world prepares every single day, how he takes care of himself and trains, and um, the sacrifices he makes, and, and, and he's done that as well. And, and I think, you know, if you look at Nate's game and how much he's improved and, and where he's come, um, you know, he's, I, you know, I think those two guys are the top two complete players in the league. Uh, you know, if you're going to build a team, uh, across the league, those are the two, two guys you're going to pick first. And, um, you know, they, they, they want to win every single night, they're competitive. And, uh, you know, so uh, Nate's done an incredible job of kind of, you know, following his footsteps and, and making the sacrifices he needed to make to become, you know, one of the top players in the league.